morning we gather together to remember the life of Her Majesty the Queen. Whatever your views on monarchy, I'm sure we can all agree that hers was a remarkable life, lived in the full glare of publicity. Very few of us will have memories of a world before she ascended the throne. Her reign spanned the decades and all the changes that have taken place through that time. So we come together to remember and celebrate the life of a remarkable woman who has touched so many lives and met so many people. Can I ask those of you who are able, please, to stand and observe the moment? If so, please take time to join us after the service in the church hall to talk to myself or to others who can provide a listening ear over a cup of tea. There is a recording from the moderator of the General Assembly on the Kilrainy web pages offering his thoughts and a prayer for Her Majesty and the Royal Family if you would like to view that later today. The observer amongst you will notice there is no order of service because obviously a number of things had to change rather, at rather late notice. So the hymns on the board are correct and I will announce them as we go through the service this morning. So just please bear with us uh, as we do that. Let us come and worship the Lord. In time of light and time of darkness we gather in this place seeking the solace of faith and to be found by the mercy of the living God, with tears and with laughter, with the memories of long years. On this day we share that which is good, and that which brings us comfort and hope. Amen. So let us begin our worship in singing the hymn 110, Glory be to God the Father, one, one, two.
kingdom, and yet now near to us through Jesus Christ. We come to share our sadness and our loss, and speak of things that weigh down our hearts. In the time of parting and sorrow, your comfort reaches out towards us. In the coldness of our loss, and our sense of things never returning to how they were, we seek you out. Your steadiness and your comfort, in the emptiness, you fill us with love. In the darkness, you bathe us with light. Come, Holy God, take from us the burden of guilt and fear, that we may walk upon your good earth, confident of your mercy, embraced by your graciousness. Forgive us, gentle God, for the words and thoughts and deeds which have made this world a little bleaker, a little harsher, harsher, a little less humane. Take from us the things that cause us hurt or harm. Remove from us the impulse to selfish actions or unkind behaviour. Set us free today to live the life of hope and generosity you wish for all your children. May the God of the open heart and the Christ of gentle joy and the spirit of embracing love grant you, each one of you, the forgiveness and freedom that enhances life and embellishes existence. Through Christ our Lord we pray. And now we join our voices together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing again from the hymn book, hymn 63, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
first reading is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though a war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One day I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let us sing again in the hymn book, The Lord is My Shepherd, Psalm 23, which can be found at hymn 14. The Lord is My Shepherd.
second reading is from John 14, the King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to, to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. Of whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. To respond to it when I say, Lord, in your mercy, feel free to say, Hear my prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice, and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation that may they have the discipline and discernment courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, for the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing again from the hymn book number 694, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. 694.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Amen. I think that today is a day a few of us expected. Despite the knowledge that the late Queen was ageing and becoming increasingly frail, like so many people in our lives, Her Majesty was someone who was just always there, part of our lives, a fixture. So the events of the past few days have come, to, come as a shock to us all, regardless of how we feel about hereditary monarchy. We can see through our national media the impact of our passing has had on so many people around the world. This morning I want to focus on the characteristics Her Majesty displayed throughout her life and reign as Queen, her personal Christian faith and her devotion to service. The Church of Scotland website has a collation of extracts from the Queen's Christmas messages and other speeches and I want to highlight just one of those messages where the Queen spoke of her faith and how she saw the impact of faith on the world. She said this, The true measure of Christ's influence is not only in the lives of the saints, but also in the good works quietly done by millions of men and women, day in, day out, throughout the centuries. Many will have been inspired by Christ's simple but powerful teaching, love God and love thy neighbour as thyself. In other words, treat others as you would like them to treat you. I know just how much I rely on my faith to guide me through the good times and the bad. Each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that day, the day brings, and to put my trust in God. I'm sure those words will resonate with many of you. Live your life in a way that demonstrates your love for your neighbour as you wish them to demonstrate that their love for you. Live, a life, live in a way that quietly touches the lives of others and works for the benefit of all. These are the qualities that many of you embody. Trying to make a difference within our community, aiming to offer a helping hand when it is required, expressing faith through work, and as I often say in our prayers of dedication, being God's eyes and ears, hands and feet. Her Majesty certainly endorsed, endorsed those values and saw them as part of her life's purpose. Which leads naturally to the other part of the legacy, service. It's often said that in leading a life of luxury, it cannot be difficult to attend a few public services and activities. But I've noted more and more as I get older that those in positions of high office or status spend much of their lives at the behest of others who require their time and service. And they have little time for the simple things in life that many of us might take for granted. An example that's been well reported is the story of Her Majesty having to leave her young family behind for a six-month tour of the Commonwealth. Very few of us will have, had, will have found ourselves in a position of having to leave children and family behind because of our work, unless, of course, you've been in the armed forces or other similar occupations. Yes, having castles and palaces People waiting on you and all the trappings of wealth and power can make life easier, but it still comes at a price. I spoke a lot earlier in the summer about leadership, and I talked about Christ's quiet leadership. Her Majesty offered an example of leadership that was very human, very quiet. It wasn't showy, it was down to earth. It wasn't the kind of leadership we often see from politicians or business people. It was the leadership that Jesus demonstrated 
It doesn't need to be shouted from the rooftops. Even those born into wealth and status can, if they choose, offer leadership that is inclusive and inspiring. Her Majesty certainly seemed to embody those qualities of being a servant leader, rather than the more divisive model of kingship that we often imagine of combat combativeness of imposing leadership on others. Many of you will have your own memories of Her Majesty. You may have met her at an official event, been presented an award, or encountered her in more informal situations. And please take time after the service to share those moments with us all. It'd be good to hear your memories. I want to reflect finally a little bit on our gospel reading this morning. The extracts from John's chapter 14 are frequently used as part of funeral services and it's entirely appropriate that we hear them today. The promise Jesus makes that he is going before us to make a place for us in his father's house is one of the great statements of faith and consolation we are given. Those who believe in Jesus have seen the Father, and the Father will reward them for that faith. This is the consolation we are all assured of if we live with Jesus as our Saviour and Lord. The next few days will be challenging for many people, not least the royal family themselves. We must never forget that while there's going to be a great deal of pomp and circumstance, that family has lost a mother, a grandmother, and the central focus of their family. Many others will feel a sense of disorientation as the world changes around them in ways they cannot comprehend. There will be a whirlwind of information, commentary, and ceremony. Those of us who have an interest in history will be enthralled by the rituals steeped in tradition. But we must never forget that at the centre of everything is a woman who lived a long life and lived it well. And a family in mourning. God bless them and God bless all who mourn at this time. Amen. May God have his blessing to these words. We'll sing again from the hymn book number 182. Now thank we all our God. 182. <laughs>
generous God, who engages with the world in which we live, we give you thanks that all is known to you and blessed by your eternal presence. God of the past, the present and the future. For the bedrock of faith, for the deep roots of faith, receive our thanks this day. In times of change and transformation, where we miss the familiar and long for stability, reassure us with the steadfastness of your love. Here are thanks for this nation of ours, its people and its places, the human tapestry of young and old, women and men, the city dweller and the country folk, one people. Enhance our respect for each other, trusting in the inherent goodness that each child of the universe offers to a broken world. Here are thanks for Elizabeth, our late Queen, Blessed by grace, resolute in service, modest in person. For the years of her reign and the sweep of history through which she provided both anchor and springboard. We thank you for her dedication to this nation and the Commonwealth, and for all the rich gifts of wisdom, kindness, and inclusion she brought to her long decades. We give you thanks for the lives she, she has touched, for the radiance of her smile and the encouragement of her words. We thank you for the sparkle of her humour, the ease of tension she encountered, and for the determination of her life to see its duties through. King of King, and Lords of Lords, we thank you for the families she united through her person those near and dear to her in their home life, those brought together by the union of this kingdom, those spread throughout the commonwealth of nations so dear to her, to her heart. For our nation at this time we pray, asking for comfort in our loss and hopefulness as we step forward into the days ahead. As our thankfulness mingles with our sadness, May we support each other and be together communities of tenderness and kindness. Sustain us with the strong memories of the past and prepare us for joyfulness in the days before us. In the dignity of our time of grief, may we find in each other encouragement to share our tears and be consoled by remembering laughter that eases emptiness and speaks to us of life continuing in generations to come. God save our King and bless him in these days of preparation. Imbue him with the strength of character, the openness of heart, the suppleness of mind and the generosity of spirit that will anoint him in the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask these things. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 740. And then after the blessing, if you can remain standing, and we will sing hymn 703, which is God Save Our Gracious King. And you'll have to remember to change that last word. The CH4 has not been reprinted yet. So hymn 740, for all the saints from whom their labours rest.
grace was crowned not with gold but with thorns, and whose blood was shed to give life to the world. Crown us with your love, that we may serve one another with humility and joy, and your kingdom come with peace on earth. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forevermore. <laughs>